What's up, America? Rent from Los Angeles to San Francisco to Houston, Texas to Charlotte, North Carolina is coming down. Why, why am I excited? I told you this was going to happen a few months ago. And I'm going to tell you why it's happening. What does this mean in the long term prospects of this? Because rent is coming down, just like your hustling godfather said a few months ago. Uh, first of all, there are many people who want to challenge me who have not been in business as long as I have, and they don't understand what happens when money stops coming into a business. Businesses start making adjustments. I know that many people will keep pushing on on this V-shaped recovery and all this other stuff. I'm here to tell you it ain't going to happen. I want you who've been following this channel to put in the comments how often I've been wrong. How often have I been wrong? So keep listening. So why are these rents coming down? First of all, in all of the high rent districts, workers are exiting. They're leaving in droves. They are like, bye New York, bye Los Angeles, goodbye San Francisco. And if they have the ability to work at home, and this is something that Facebook put out that Mark Zuckerberg is like, if you move away from one of these high rent districts, we're going to lower your pay. He got massive backlash for that. Massive backlash. But this is what's happening. When this global reset, you're having a reset of the chess pieces across the board. People who are in tech are like, well, I'm going to live in Los Angeles and pay $4,000 a month for a one bedroom apartment when I can move to Houston or Dallas and pay half of that, get more, live better and have less stress. So people are like, Hey, you know, this, this financial crunch, has forced people to look at their money and look at what they're doing. But this is why rents are coming down. Remember there's 42 million people plus because I'm going to say what's going to happen. This is going to happen this month. I'm letting you know for you people, you high wage tech workers who thought you were immune, not so much. They're coming for you next. And I'm going to tell you why, but, these apartment complexes are seeing a demand is down. Now I know that there are many people who feel that these are, you know, like, let me go ahead and tell you the story of my landlord, um, Mr. Sam Arbizer. Sam Arbizer was an immigrant. He came to this country. He lived the American dream. He left a legacy for his children, 35, 40 warehouses in a trust fund that were all paid for. Now my landlord could play the, I'm not going to cut rent game because the property was owned outright. Much of this new property has loans on it and they have obligations to their lending institutions that they got to keep some cash flow coming in. And what do you do in the bad market? You lower rent. I mean, like I said, many months, I saw this coming. I was rubbing my crystal ball. I saw this coming because I've been in business and I know what businesses do in bad times. I saw this coming many, many months ahead. And I'm about to tell you what else is about to come. That many of these so-called well insulated tech workers are about to start losing their jobs. Why? Because the tech companies are losing their customers. Yeah. See, you know, one plus one equals two and one minus one equals one. This is about to start happening. So those highly paid tech workers, those high income workers who were thought they were insulated, the companies are now starting to lose business and they're starting to lose customers. And this is why the layoffs are going to continue. The layoffs, because once again, everyone's like, hey, the state's opened up. Everyone's going to hire their workers back. We're going to be back to business. Third quarter is going to start ramping up. Fourth quarter will be back to normal. It ain't happening. See, this is one of the things that I talk about on Savage Finance, and you should subscribe to Savage Finance so you can get your financial education, is weak financial foundations. Many people run their personal finance like a crack house on fire. And many companies do the same thing. 
and many of these companies have no cash reserves to weather a prolonged storm and we're only talking three months here you know there are some companies like warren buffett he's sitting on 130 billion he 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 gonna be good apple sitting on like 200 billion they're gonna be good actually apple sales are up so they're gonna be good see there is a practicality to sound financial because you know i put up a video on savage finance the other day like the first thing you need to do to start your business and it didn't get a lot of views because people are looking for quick easy simple solutions i'm here to tell you in the 2020 the year of the murder hornet the year of locust biblical locusts in india and pakistan there are no easy, quick, simple solutions. You're going to have to pull up your sleeves and get to work. That's the reality. And like um, for you folks who get mad every time I pull up a thumbnail with a gun in it, what is wrong with you people? Guns don't hurt people. People hurt people. You soft, you, you soft folks. You're so soft. It's like, oh, God, he put up a gun. Oh my God, he, you know, I like guns. I'm a gun, I, I have my you know concealed carry permit. I have five weapons. I am a gun nut. Get with it. Stop being so soft. Stop being so moist. Oh my God, he put a gun in the thumbnail. Oh. There will be more guns in the thumbnails, just to let you know, they, there will be. But one of the things that's happening is people are starting to reconsider their choices. People are starting to really look at, you know, I'm, I'm like, I make $150,000, but $50,000 of that per year goes toward rent. What if I can make the same money and move somewhere else? So this is what you're, you're going to see a shifting of the population base from the larger cities to smaller cities for a slower, more predictable, and better lifestyle. People are going, only people going to be living in the cities in the future are going to be rich people. It's going to be people have the money to enjoy living in the cities. It's going to be rich people and it's going to be van life and it's going to be the homeless. That's who's going to be living in these cities in the future. <laughs> but this is why rent is going down across the country and in Charlotte, it's the first time that this has happened in nine years. And this is to let you know how bad things are getting. Because, one, because like I said, 42 million people. Now, if anyone tells you that unemployment is 14%, they cannot add. Because if you take 42 million as a percentage from 160 million people working, you're going to get 27%. Our unemployment rate right now is 27 to 28 percent. And I predict that by the end of June, we're going to have 30 percent unemployment. And as once it starts to hit these high wage white collar workers, this is when and right now the GOP Senate has kind of like, oh, wait a minute. The GOP Senate, who was like, hey, we're not going to extend these unemployment benefits. They're kind of like, well, not, let's not do 600, but let's do 300. So they're putting that on the table. They've done a complete 180 on that. You want to know why? It's an election year and they have 23 seats that are open and vulnerable. It's amazing what an election year will, will make a politician do. They've, now they've, they've like had a come to Jesus moment. It's like, hey, you know, Jesus, we need to help these people. We need to give them some more money. And also, my favorite expression, some of you hate it, some of you love it. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. If you were to take this $600 from people who were accustomed to getting it, you would have chaos. You think they are rioting in the streets over George Floyd? Ho, ho, ho. Wait, let them not renew these benefits and you will see rioting in the streets because America's at a critical mass right now. And, you know, I, I do my daily check at around 5 p.m. on 285. I get in my vehicle, go out there 
and traffic has not come back, even though Georgia has been open going on two months. And, you know, there were many people who, let me just put this gently. There were many smart people who have been drunk on the last 12 years of the stock market and who've never run a business, who've never been responsible for payroll, that's never had the challenge of running a business and almost going out of a business. And they've been making these predictions based upon their theories, based upon their assumptions, because they have no real world knowledge to operate from. And whenever someone that challenges me on this V-shaped recovery crap, I was like, what are you getting your information? And they can never give me solid statistics. They can't give me unemployment. They can't give me business closures. It's just like, well, I feel, I feel that it's going to be a V-shaped recovery because I'm smart and I've been talking this smickety smack smack and and what I give you guys is real world economics. Everything that I say, because someone's like, oh, he lies. What if I lied about? Everything I say, you can do a quick Google search and verify. Some people just lazy. Some people a little jealous that, you know, I'm getting more attention than them. But here's the thing. What has happened to America, I believe, was intentional. What has happened to America is harsh. And it's just part of the global reset. Because once again, during my live streams, and I know a lot of you want the live streams to come back, they will probably start coming back next week. I just won't do them every day because I'm in the middle of resetting my YouTube channel. And as you can see that the videos are starting to get more and more views, so it's starting to work. I've got a new strategy here. Um, so the, the live streams are not coming back the way that they used to, but they will be back and we will be doing a lot more stuff. But you're about to see another reset and this is going to be the corporate America reset. The stock market's going to keep doing double monkey backflips. The Fed's going to keep supporting them. This is going to continue on until the final math comes in. Warren Buffett, uh, Dan Ar Arillo, uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, all these old rich billionaires are looking at the tea leaves and they're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. Other chaos, because maybe you folks on unemployment will get some reprieve because it's June and they're supposed to run out in less than seven weeks seven weeks so the clock's ticking so we're going to see what congress does but with this global reset because see one of the things that corporations are finding you know corporations have been fighting this work at home work remote movement for many many years and now they're saying oh that actually works so what you're going to see is a other destruction of commercial real estate you ain't you know commercial real estate is taking it on the chin right now Commercial real estate is in a bloodbath right now. You ain't seen nothing yet is what to come because a lot of these corporate clients are going to use the pandemic to opt out of their high dollar rents. And you're going to see like, if you want to get into commercial real estate in 2020, 2021, 2022, there will be amazing deals. There will be amazing deals. Because like I said, I look at real estate in my area, because if you want to invest in real estate, you got to study your market that you want to invest in so you know what's going on. Because there are some markets, even with all this crazy stuff that's going on, that are doing well because they have high, strong uh, employment. But real estate is going to be seriously impacted by this. Now, you're not going to, you know, like an apartment that was 5,000, it's not going to go for 2,500 but it may go for 4,500, it may go for 4,000, you know? Now, where are you gonna find these screaming deals are gonna be with private investors who don't know what they're doing. Right now, there's a whole bunch of people who got in real estate, had a little cash, had some funding, they didn't know what they were doing, and now they are struggling. They're like, whoa, no, mama didn't tell me there were gonna be days like this. I've got this property, I gotta pay on this property and I don't have nobody in this property for six months. 
That's where you're going to get your screaming deals. And this is where you need to research your market and know what's going on because you're going to be able to get stuff dirt cheap. Once again, you're going to be able to get, you know, like I said, rents coming down. There's going to be real estate deals, commercial real estates in the bloodbath. So all this stuff is going on right now. And once you see that corporate America is like, well, if we can do more with less, so by golly gee whiz, let's do that. Which means that you're going to start to see some people who normally don't get laid off, get laid off. And it's going to be crazy. And once again, I was like 100% sure there wasn't going to be a second stimulus check, but it's an election year. Let me tell y'all a little funny little story. Uh, Because one of the things that, you know, uh, with people who disagree with me, I was like, put your money where your mouth is. And no one ever puts their money where their mouth is because they don't really believe it. Because, see, the money makes it real. And I was putting up here a $5,000 challenge on Facebook page. And dude had all of these, well, you know, we want to make sure that they don't do this. And if they don't have mail-in balloting. And I'm like, nothing to do with the economy. See, when you challenge people with money where it's like you got to put your money on the line, that's when people start getting being more careful, being a little bit more judicious. And he had like 12 escape clauses. I'm like, dude, what's this stuff with the politics? And I was like, you know, he's like, well, politics kept me from opening my business for two months. And I'm like, uh huh. And I just left it alone because he didn't have no appetite for putting his money where the mouth is. Because, see, every time I do this stuff, people try to rig it where they can make sure they can get money, but the rigging gets further and further away from their original argument. Like I said, there will, you know, and it's like, uh, he went back to 1953 for a V-shaped recovery. Like, what's happening now is not what happened in 1953. 1953, we did not have 42 million people unemployed and growing. In 1953, we did not have the reduction of rents. In 1953, we did not have the collapse of the commercial real estate market. We did not have a recession, depression. Totally different times. Totally different. And see, the people are so addicted to the last 12 years that that it's hard for them to function. It's hard for them to come to grips. It's hard for them to bear witness to the chaos that we're experiencing right now. We're experiencing other madness and chaos. But rents will go down for a while because our economy is not going to be, you know, and this, this right here, rents going down. That doesn't lend itself to a V-shaped recovery. Hmm. Like literally from across the nation, from San Francisco to Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, to Charlotte, North Carolina, to Atlanta, Georgia, rents are going down. You want to know why rents are going down? Because it's getting harder and harder, harder to qualify because so many people don't have a job. One plus one equals two. Men lie, women lie, math never lies. And this is how this is how I do this. I look at the math from a business owner perspective. Not a pundit, not a blogger, but for someone who's going out into the economic marketplace and has done battle and killed dragons and competed and competed with people with real money. That's what I'm looking at. And the math ain't good. The math ain't good because you want to know something else that's going to happen. We may see a new set of riots because I'm like, you know, I'm kind of changing my thinking on another stimulus check because right now America's burning for the last four or five days. Every night we are in bed. We've had a curfew here in Atlanta and the power, the, the body politic is paying attention. And the body politic, who are senators and House, they're old people. These folks have been around the corner a time or two. 
most of them. They know what time it is. And they're like, if George Floyd was enough for this to happen, what's going to happen if we snatch that money from these people? We're talking millions of people. We're not talking about a couple of million of people. We're talking 42, 43 million plus people that will now find themselves being destitute. That's enough to riot. That's enough to go out and destroy some stuff. Right now, people are cutting up across the country. They're pulling down all of these, you know, in the South, they put up uh, moratoriums to keep these Confederate statues up and all these moratoriums are expiring. They're like, hey, hey we, we'll, we'll take them down. We will take them down. Don't, don't, don't burn the courthouse down. We, and give us 24 hours and we're going to take these offensive monuments down and they're taking them down. Because see, the people, I don't think the people have realized the power that they have. But I think that people are starting to wake up like, oh, we go ahead and set this city on fire. Things start to change. Ha <laughs> ha. Where's my bick? <laughs> so people are starting to understand that violence. And, you know, there, there's many debates here on Facebook and all over the Internet about violence and the protesters and stuff. And um, violence works. It worked for our forefathers. Remember the Boston Tea Party? That was violent. See, violence is a natural order of things. When a woman has a baby, that's really violent. Ask any woman who's given birth and ask her to talk about that pain. It's very, very violent. It's violent giving birth to a new ideal. So don't be surprised if the violence continues because violence gets attention. And Trump, like Trump don't know what to do. And you know, to be fair to Trump, any president who was in this situation would be struggling. These are not normal times. So you can't really say that this, you know, that, you know, Trump's mishandling of the coronavirus, that, that's one thing, but now his mishandling of these protests, and you know, like there are some people in the comments who are still trying to protect Trump. Like, no, it was, uh, A.G. Barr who did this, it wasn't Trump. Who does A.G. Barr work for? Who does A.G. Barr take orders from? Trump. So it was Trump. So the violence may go on for a minute. We may be start, we may be up here acting like a third world country with the violence and the Molotov cocktails and the people doing stuff. And the police, oh my God. The police have lost their natural minds. The police have gone crazy. The police have been wilding out. Like, just go Google police running over pro protesters in their cars, in their, in their SUVs. There's a picture, if you're one of my Facebook friends, you can see that there's this picture of this chick who was walking home from the grocery store. Police just pop pop popped upside the head with a rubber bullet. She wasn't even protesting. So the police are out of pocket, you know, in Atlanta, here in Atlanta, uh, several of them got fired for literally just pulling out these two people out their car, tasing them. Ta -ta -ta -ta. It is sheer and other madness that's going on in America. It is craziness. But you about to get some cheaper rent. You about to, you know, I fully expect unemployment to get to 50 million. So that's going to take 2 million people because I think it was like 1.9 million people laid off first week of June. So we're at 43. So if the layoffs continue at their present rate, we will be at 50 million people out of 160 million that are working unemployed. That's going to be a 30% unemployment rate, highest ever in America. And I want to, you to ask yourself, why haven't the Democratic and the Republican leaders put in safeguards to prevent this from happening? In other countries, this ain't happening. It's just happening here in the good old USA. 
I, I'm, I keep trying to tell you guys that the country is being intentionally dismantled, that this is being done purposely. And we need to come together and everyone needs to get their economic agenda. Everyone needs to sit down and think of what they can do to serve their community. Because like I said, like I put this call out, if you're rioting, riot, you know, if you're, you're protesting, protest during the day, stay at home during the nights. Because as my Aunt Sally May used to say, nothing good happens between 10 a.m., 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. That's when the bad folks are out. And right now, you know, you're having people who are shot, people who are, I mean, it is just disgusting to watch that these young people are beating up old people. What did this old person do to you? I mean, seriously, they putting hands on grandpa and grandma. And it's absolutely disgusting. But it's like the purge. People are wilding out. People are losing it. People are going crazy. People are losing their grips on reality. And if the GOP doesn't renew this additional benefit, you may see more rioting. You may see riots in August. And also, let's look at what the riots and the protests are doing. They're making a bad situation worse. These small businesses were already struggling. Now they're getting kicked in the teeth. They're being looted. Yes, there are white looters to the white news media. Yes, there are many white looters. There's a bunch of white looters. Call a thief a thief. Don't be like, well, she must be an employee as she's walking around, clearly seen taking stuff and walking out the store with it. I mean, come on. That, that's just crazy that you refuse to call a spade a spade. She was a looter. She was stealing. She was, and I even saw a white grandmother up in Target. I'm like, why you, grandma, why are you up in Target? I was like, what, what is going on? Why are you out? What is up? People, humans. But once again, for you to actually, like for some of you who are well positioned, who, who have a solid job, who have money in the bank, you know, you're going to be able to get some deals. Like if you need a car right now, the used car market is trash for sellers. I mean, you can walk up and like, hey, you know, I got $2,000. You're going to take it. Just depends upon how desperate they are. Because once again, from my business experience, I know how people act during desperate times. I have seen them as my customers coming in. I have seen them as people I bought stuff off of at ridiculously cheap prices because they needed money. They needed money. Right now, there's a lot of business owners who haven't run their business correctly, and you're going to be able to buy their business for the cheap. So to start our, let's start our economic agenda together. Go below, get 30 days to 2,500. Go below and get the Hustler's Mindset, Pimp Your Mind for Success. And also, if you can afford it, get the money management course. This will set your personal finances on fire. This will give you unparalleled elements. And for those of you who are looking to do more, how to make money from scratch, probably this Sunday, I'm gonna do a live webinar. So the link's below that, and I'm gonna give you a little extra off. So with that, check out this next video. And I will see you guys later.